Um, welcome everybody to the March 21st meeting of the Housing and Economic Development Committee. Um, <clears throat> Bill Dwyer is not with us this evening, uh, nor is Emma Dragon. Um, so uh, in terms of the agenda, I had a few things to talk about. Um, one is the update on the university project. Uh, the housing forum, an affordable housing update, um, some zoning articles, and Chapter 40, our study committee. So if you want to move through those. Um, I don't know if everybody saw, uh, there was an article that the Gazette ran about the student project. Um, and I thought that was pretty positive. Uh, so myself, Mark Howard, and Justin were actually present for that. Um, so, I don't know, Mark or Justin, you want to share your thoughts about how things are going with that project? Sure. Yeah, there's a lot of really good work from the students, uh, a lot of really great attention to detail. Uh, from a brief conversation I had with Lynn, it sounded like uh, she was pretty excited by the concepts. Um, I will say one of the takeaways I had was uh, you know, being as familiar with the site as I am, I did not realize how big that site mm -hmm. is. I mean, it was 33 acres and the sheer volume of parking when you see it mapped out the way the students did. I forget, they, they gave us a number. It was like millions of square feet of parking. And I, I was blown away. So it was, it was really eye-opening. I think the, um, when the architecture students take it on through the rest of the semester, we'll see some really good products. Yeah, I'd echo that and say that... Um... There were some really great ideas with, with what to do with a lot of that uh, a lot of that land and uh, and uh, you know the the number of different uh, proposals there was was really good in terms of again a, a whole range of pretty uh, pretty interesting ideas so I, I thought it was really well done and I'm always um, reminded when you're around any of the students at the university you know my immediate reaction is oh my gosh they're so young. You know, um, and then you get into these projects and you realized, you know, again, just how bright and capable and, and uh, you know, the just the energy in the room uh, that, that was fun to, to be around. You know, the kids are really, really excited um, and just watching the interaction with the professors as well. You know, how the professors um, <clears throat> kind of poked at, at um, you know, their observations and how the the students reacted to constructive criticism. You know, it was a, it was a great experience, and uh, I'm I'm thrilled. You know, with what they're with what they're doing. Um, I have had to remind a couple of um, just a couple of people that that saw the Gazette article. Um, you know, were wondering if this was something that the, the town was putting forward and that we're moving forward with a redevelopment of the mall. And I and I had to remind people that no, you know, again, it's it's an exercise, um, it's an engagement, but it's a way for us to vision the possibilities. Um, you know, again, our, our current zoning clearly doesn't allow for um, any of what you know, the students were coming up with because there's no housing currently allowed on the mall, but uh, on the mall property. But again, I hope um, I, I had many, many people um, approach with a very positive reaction to the article and said they thought it was great that people were thinking about um, Hadley's future. So I think that was a good thing. Tony, how about on your end? Did, um, I know you had a conflict that day, but did you get any feedback? Um, I did talk to Steve Schreiber. Um, you know, he uh, was, uh, I think, really excited uh, about the day or actually communicate with Steve. We didn't speak. We it was more uh, it was via email. Um, uh, so, you know, I know things went successfully. The article was was great. Um, I've heard, you know, some good reaction um, about the article from folks here on campus. Um, but un unfortunately that day I was tied up with a number of different meetings. So, um, I'm really sad to have missed it. Yeah. So it sounds like, I don't remember the exact, um, record. I don't, I don't know if we have exact dates, but, um, <clears throat> there's going to be more opportunity, uh, because, you know, again, this was kind of a check-in, um, from what I understood. J sure. Justin, you probably know more because you went through the program kind of what tra trajectory this will follow at this point? 
Yeah, so it was a it's a joint studio. So the architecture and landscape architecture students were working together up until now, and then uh, what they proposed today was kind of half of the solution. It, or today, uh, last week was half of the solution, uh, where they studied kind of the site arrangement, the program building configurations. You know, what a future development would look like, and then uh, the landscape students are now done, and the architecture students will take the project from this stage on through the rest of the semester, where they'll develop. Uh, a little bit more detailed iterations of the actual architectural solutions. You know, how do we program mixed use properties and what do the actual buildings look like? What is the experience for the pedestrians on the street? Those kinds of answers will start to come into focus as the architecture students take it forward. Okay. All right, great. So yeah, I mean, I think, I think this is a really good thing that we were able to um, get started in collaboration with the university and I hope uh, I hope this can get leveraged into um, whether it's action um, in terms of you know potential zoning changes or or even just you know solidifying the relationship with the university for other projects like this down the road too. It'd be really great. So does anybody have any questions or, or comments on that? Um, if we do get any information from um, Ann Marshall's the primary point of contact at the university. So if there's anything to sh actually share with you, um, certainly we'll uh, I'll forward that along to the whole committee. But at this point, um, you know, I think we're wait waiting for that next phase that Justin just described. Oh, you're muted, Crystal. Sorry, looking at the video with the students and yourself and, and how how much information they were able to map out and, and just everything that they provided, the architecture of everything was just wonderful to see and how these young minds are actually being so creative with the usage of the space that they're given to work with. It was just, just amazing to see how much space is really actually there once you see it on paper. It's, it's, I was in awe, I didn't know it was that big. Yeah, yeah, I don't think any of us really had that perspective. Yeah. Yeah, but they're very, very smart and, and very knowledgeable. And I think we're in good hands. Yeah. It, it also showed us just how much parking is always, you know, if we think about it, how much parking isn't ever used there. <laughs> right? I mean, you, you've, do you ever see that parking lot, you know, even 75% full when you look at all those parking spaces. I mean, and that's, a, you know, the busiest Christmas shopping afternoon, you know, um, mm -hmm. most of the time, you know, what a three quarters of it's empty, more than three quarters. It's just, just a ridiculous amount of parking there. Yeah. One of the things I actually found the most illuminating was they, they did some sort of data analysis at the beginning and, um, they, they pulled some data from Google about how busy the various businesses on the site are. And uh, Trader Joe's, you know, I'm eyeballing it, but Trader Joe's is roughly a quarter of the size of Target, but had twice the volume of activity. So it was pretty interesting. And, and from their data, they actually kind of extrapolated out and, and determined that the, the most viable or most active uses are the ones that deal with wellness or lifestyle, like the Planet Fitness location. So it was really interesting to see. And I'm sure you know, Lynn Gray has some thoughts as well about sort of what, what uh, types of commercial development are successful in that area. And I think that that could inform some of the decisions we make moving forward as well. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so nobody from uh, the planning board was able to attend, um, but uh, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, at least make sure that they, they saw the article. Um, I sent the link to, to all, of, all of our committee and I didn't think to send it to the planning board. So. Um, I will do that <clears throat> just to make sure, just in case they missed it. So, okay. Um, so if there's nothing else on that topic, then uh, the next next topic on the agenda is the housing forum. So uh, that has been stalled a bit, um, primarily, you know, as we discussed at our last meeting, because of the lack of availability availability or lack thereof for Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. 
Um, I did speak with Bill Dwyer and he said that um, he thinks the best thing to do might be for he and I to get Ken Comia, who's been our point of contact on the housing production plan um, and, the, and the person that we had lined up to be a speaker um, on a conference call and have Ken kind of lay out his calendar for several months so we can then try to line the senior center back up for the venue and, and try to get the um, the other speakers we had, see if we can find, uh, you know, uh, a date for that um, later on in the year. So that's unfortunate, but again, if we're gonna do it, we wanna do it, um, you know, with the, the most impactful delivery possible. And, and I think we all agreed it would be good to have a third party there. Um, and Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is the right player for that. So that's that's the only um, information I have there. Um, affordable housing update. I'm not aware of anything. Bill didn't mention anything. Uh, the only thing I can say there is that, uh, you know, the affordable housing trust. Yeah, so we have the affordable housing trust that holds funds currently. Then um, there's not any specific plan for the use of those funds. Um, so it's like, I think it's somewhere between six and seven hundred thousand dollars in there right now. Um, we did finally have a meeting of the affordable housing trustees, um, which right now is basically the planning board. And then I'm the representative from the select board. And uh, we had it, it was really just like a uh, kind of a reorganizational meeting because they hadn't met in so long. So um, we just appointed a, you know, a chair and a clerk um, and we did agree to now start meeting on a quarterly basis. So I'm hopeful that that will start some activity relative to, you know, what do we do with the money that we have? Um, you know, is it just an accumulation vehicle at this point or, you know, how, how might those funds be used? And then that'll be good information for us to bring back to this group as well. So I don't know if, um, it, and the other, the other thing that we keep talking about is, uh, as far as I know, I don't think that, I'm not aware that this state has ever formally updated where we're at now with our inventory, you know, the magic 10% and then we were at 12. Um, what I've heard informally is that it did drop, but it's still above the 10%. I think we're in like the 11% range right now. But, you know, again, there's concern that given the housing crisis, there's nothing magic about 10%. That 10% could be changed, you know, by the governor's office at some point. So, um, you know, yeah, so I, I don't know if uh, if you all saw the the news. I think it was in the Globe, but um, one of the towns out by Boston uh, just came under fire from the governor's office because they refused or failed to comply with the transit oriented development housing bylaw or whatever it is that they put in place. And uh, the state is it seems like making an example of them. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see increased scrutiny and focus from the state on towns um, around the subject of affordable housing. It seems like they're they're trying to be uh, more aggressive about that. Yep. So, um, so again, if, there, if there's anything, you know, at a future meeting, anybody wants to talk about specifically, you know, I'm happy to get it on an agenda, but uh, that's what, what we know right now. Um, the next two items, so zoning articles um, and then chapter 40, our study committee. Um, you know, again, unfortunately, Bill's not here to speak to any <clears throat> zoning articles, um, but I, I did talk to him about the, for, the 40, our study committee. So, uh, I guess at a planning board meeting, the planning board decided um, to go after a, a DLTA grant. That's the um, local assistance grant. 
and they were successful in getting one. Uh, and so again, this is working with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So it's it's similar to what we did when we asked um, PBPC for help with the housing production plan. So the planning board is asking them for technical assistance uh, to look at 40R. So um, what they've done is they've agreed to form a 40R subcommittee, basically. And just a reminder, 40R, you know, another one of those lovely, um, you know, Mass General Law chapters or whatever, but 40R um, it is, it has to be adopted um, and it has to be assigned a, a, a zoning district, if you will. Um, and it's a way to provide a lot more flexibility for developers um, to come in and, and put housing uh, stock on particular sites. So it's something that the planning board has been talking about. Um, and they want more information on that and they want help looking you know, again, along the Route 9 corridor to see what sites or what areas might be appropriate to allow for that. <clears throat> so on the committee, uh, from what I understand, Mark, Mark Dunn from the planning board is the chair. Uh, Mike Sarzinski has agreed to be a voting member. Um, they are looking for somebody from the select board. So we'll have somebody um, from the select board appointed to that. And they would also like somebody from this committee. So again, similar to the housing production, I'm assuming that they will, once they have their committee assembled, they'll find uh, a time that would work for all of the committee members to meet. And I'm sure it will be done via Zoom. And again, you know, it will be along with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So I've got a um, something that Bill sent along that I can pull up here. Can everybody see that? It says scope of work. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so you can see, I mean, this, you know, uh, kind of breaks out what that project is going to look like. And I'm pretty sure Bill said it has to be completed by December 31st. So it would be starting sometime between now and the end of, and continuing through the end of the year. So it's, um, you know, exploring the development of a 40-hour smart growth district in town, um, focusing on adaptive reuse. Uh, so first they're gonna do a land use analysis, review the zoning bylaws. Um, there will be a public engagement event. Uh, again, similar to what we're trying to do with the forum for housing ourselves, um, but, but this would have a different focus. And then the final draft coming out of that would be a zoning bylaw revision or a proposed new smart growth bylaw. Um, so I believe that the goal of the planning board is to get this done with the hopes that they might be able to bring this to annual town meeting in 2025. Okay. So are you going to be able to send us a copy of that? Yep, I can, I can, sure, I can forward that via email. Thank you. Yep. Thank um, you. So I don't know that we have to decide tonight, but I think, you know, they're looking to, to compose the committee. So if anybody is interested in participating, don't all jump uh, at I'm, once. I'll toss my hat in the ring. Most of the work I've done professionally is in 40B, but uh, I'm sort of familiar with 40R, so I, I feel like I could contribute, but also happy to uh, offer it to anybody else who might have more interest. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, th I think Justin <laughs> has the better experience to uh, contribute more to the committee than I do or anybody else, so. Okay. He's willing um, to do it. Yep. That, that Certainly works for me. So does anybody want to make a motion to appoint Justin to the 40R subcommittee? Sure, I make a motion. I second okay. Mark's motion. All right, motion made by Mark Howard, seconded, was that Sean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. 
um, I will let them know. We have to do all those in favor. Oh yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> You'd think I'd know this drill by now, don't you? Um, okay, all of those in favor of appointing Justin to the subcommittee, say aye. Aye. <laughs> Yeah, and Crystal had her hand up too already. She was voting. I <laughs> forgot to say it out loud. <laughs> okay, great. Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's it for the agenda tonight. Um, I don't think there are any unforeseen items, but um, anything that anybody would like to have on a future agenda that we're not already covering. I if nothing. I think of anything, I will send it to you via email so we can discuss it in our next meeting. Okay. Thanks, Crystal. And what'd you say, Sorry. Sean? I have nothing. You got nothing. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, I probably should have mentioned this on the, the forum agenda item, but uh, I had a conversation with a resident who had mentioned uh, the school committee had done a website at one point to help like collect and provide a bunch of information. And uh, it got me thinking that with this housing forum, there's gonna be a lot of data and information. I don't know what it takes to build a website. I have no experience with that. Um, but if we have the, the ability or capability of doing that, it might be a good way of uh, you know passing along the information so people don't have to sit and watch a two hour recording. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay. We can um, add that in on the agenda specifically. So as we're continuing to talk about the forum, maybe toss around some ideas for that. Yeah, maybe next meeting we can just brainstorm. I, I have no idea what, what it takes to do that kind of work. So in my mind, it's click a button and you have a website, but it's probably more complicated than that. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay, so if there's nothing else for tonight, anybody would wanna make a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Motion to adjourn. Okay, motion by Crystal and second by. I'll second. Justin, okay. <laughs>